I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. Welcome to News Du Jour. You may be wondering, why am I, Annie Bowles, here hosting this podcast? I usually start by telling people I'm a political baby. You see, my parents met working on Capitol Hill. By the time I was two, I had been in my first political commercial and even got lost crawling around the West Wing. Don't worry, Al Gore found me. My family then moved abroad when I was nine, and I attended an international school in Brussels with kids from all over the world, and it is this type of global perspective that I also bring to our show. I graduated from American University in D.C. after studying political science and art history, as well as interning on both sides of Capitol Hill. I even interned down the hall from where my parents met. I'm now pursuing a professional certificate in journalism at NYU in conjunction with Rolling Stone magazine. I guess I was always that friend in the group who cared deeply about not just what was going on politically, but also globally. I often kept my own friends informed through high school and into young adulthood, so I guess I've always done a version of this show. I'm genuinely passionate about following the news, and I'm here to break it down for you guys every weekday. We always strive to be a calmer space to get your news, or as one listener put it, like getting your news from a well-informed bestie. I'm so glad you're here. (sighs) It is Friday. I don't know about y'all, but this week really felt like it ran me over and then backed over me. I am so tired. I haven't done my skincare one time this week. I haven't put on makeup one time this week. I The only full meal I think I've sat down and eaten was the Chipotle that my husband picked up for me. It has been a doozy, but I'm not going to lie. It is because there have been a lot of unexpected blessings and projects coming into my life that I had no idea were going to show up this week. And I am so overwhelmed, but so excited for what is around the corner. And I cannot wait to fill you guys in on what we have coming down the pipes. That said, it has been a very chill week when it comes to news. Today is yet another pretty chill, slow news day. I do have things to update you guys on, though. So let's go ahead and jump in. First and foremost, a GOP chairman appears to have tried to bribe Carrie Lake. So I don't know if you guys remember Carrie Lake, but she was an Arizona uh, gubernatorial candidate. So someone running for governor. Um, And she was of the Trump variety, very far right Republican. She did not win. But this story is going to have to do with her and her various campaigns. So an Arizona Republican chairman has now resigned after a tape was leaked where he could be heard trying to bribe Carrie Lake, this former nominee for governor, and he's trying to bribe her not to run. Here's how the convo went down. So parts of these quotes don't necessarily make total sense because they're kind of snippets that were taken out of context of the larger conversation, but these are the most damning pieces. Jeff DeWitt, this disgraced chairman, said that there are, quote, very powerful people that want to keep you out, end quote, meaning out of the race. He then asked if there were, quote, any companies out there or something that could just put her on the payroll and give her to keep out, end quote. He goes on to urge Carrie not to repeat any of this to anyone. He then says, quote, is there a number at which, end quote, and Carrie interrupts him by saying, quote, can I be bought, end quote. He then says, quote, not be bought, end quote, and just says to wait a few years before running. 
She repeated herself saying that she couldn't be bought and that she believed something like this would be immoral. And yet he persisted, asking her to make a big counter offer that he could then take back to these supposed power players. Mr. DeWitt said that he did not know he was being recorded during this conversation, well, clearly, and that Gary had edited the video and rehearsed her answers to make the tape all the more damning against him. Is that true? We'll probably never know. It's probably true to some degree. Carrie Lake's camp also reportedly threatened to leak another damaging tape against him should he fail to resign. So he did resign, deciding to, as he put it, quote, not take the risk, end quote. Well, Lord knows what's on that tape. This was such a crazy, you know, scandal, a little, you know, political drama for you guys. And we'll keep you posted if there's any other news on this story. And then I wanted to take a second to touch on the European measles outbreak. So there has been a measles outbreak in Europe, despite the fact that there is obviously a vaccine against this disease. A lot of the cases were in Kazakhstan, where immunizations seem to have simply lapsed rather than people actively not getting the vaccines. But it is still causing the disease to spread to those who are deliberately choosing not to get the vaccine for themselves or for their children. We are also seeing cases pop up here in the U.S., but almost all of the cases have been linked to travel outside of the country and the cases are not higher than in years prior to COVID. But deaths from the measles worldwide have risen by 43%, y'all, from 2021 to 2022, according to reports from both the WHO and the CDC. Measles, unlike COVID, is a disease that can linger in the air for up to two hours, according to health experts for the New York Times. So, This can cause spread, obviously. If you're planning to travel abroad, just make sure that your kiddos are up to date with their vaccines so that they are safe and protected. Next up for today, we are going to be discussing global conflicts, although today's segment will be focused solely on Gaza. I do have to issue content warning here. This story involves war. So all of our updates today take place in Gaza, so let's head over there. First and foremost, a UN shelter has been bombed in Gaza. According to the New York Times, explosives that were most likely sent by Israel as they appeared to be from tanks hit a United Nations training center in southern Gaza this past Wednesday, killing at least nine people and injuring 75 others. This also set the building on fire, obviously. This facility was located in Khan Yunis, the area that is recently encircled by Israeli defense forces and is a main focus of the current fighting. And next up for today, Israel seeks to evacuate a packed area. So an estimated 425,000 people have been packed into a 1.5 square mile area in Gaza, according to the New York Times, and Israel has now ordered evacuations for this area. This area also happens to be the place where three functional hospitals exist that have 600 patients in them altogether. This accounts for about a fifth of the hospital capacity in Gaza right now, according again to the New York Times. The medical group Doctors Without Borders attests that they are currently looking after 850 patients in this area, but that they simply cannot leave because of their patient's health and that they are gravely concerned for their collective safety. Some people are fleeing for a third time in this war, you guys simply leaving when they are told to and unable to settle into any sort of normalcy or feel any sort of security amid everything that's going on. And our hearts are with anybody who is in that situation. This isn't something people should have to live through. People shouldn't be living in a war zone. And I'm so sorry to anyone who's going through this right now. Next up for today, families of hostages are protesting aid going into Gaza. 
This is because they want more pressure put on Hamas in hopes of getting their family members back. One family member of a hostage said, quote, It's just not acceptable that soldiers are putting themselves at risk fighting in Gaza and the terrorists they're fighting are getting fuel and food from us, end quote. Which obviously there's no like direct evidence that we've seen that this food is going to members of Hamas. But that is not a far-fetched concept either, given how entrenched Hamas is within Gaza. But we do know that roughly 2 million people are currently experiencing extreme food scarcity in Gaza. And that is the UN's top priority, making sure that those people can survive. Israel has now declassified military documents in order to fight off these genocide charges. So this will essentially give us that better look into their decision making that we've been talking about when it comes to this case. When the case was first brought by South Africa, we spent the bulk of an episode, if not a full episode, diving deep into this subject and this case and what we know about it. So essentially, what this genocide case comes down to is intent. That is where the burden of proof lies. And that is what Israel is going to have to answer for. What was her intent? Maybe the answers are in these documents. We'll definitely keep you guys posted. And that for this week is the news du jour. Today, I wanted to leave you guys with the quote, don't mistake the limits of your own field of vision for the limits of the world. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use to listen. A rate and review on that platform or a shout out on social media would mean the world to us and help us to be able to keep creating the news du jour and reach more people who need a calmer space to consume the news. But the best way to support all of our work is to become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash sugar free media. And that is also linked in our show notes. You can follow us on social media at news du jour dot podcast on both Instagram and TikTok. You can follow my personal account at it's Annie Bowles on both platforms as well. Any little noises you may hear in the background are my rescue pup. He has a little separation anxiety and always records with me. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from... Oh. Oh.